The Cube presents HPE Discover 2022. Brought to you by HPE. <laughs> Welcome back to HPE Discover 2022. You're watching theCUBE's coverage. This is day two, Dave Vellante with John Furrier. Sheila Rora is here. She's the Senior Vice President and GM of data, the data infrastructure business at Hewlett Packard Enterprise in, of course, the storage division. And Omar Assad, welcome back to theCUBE. Omar, Senior Vice President and General Manager for Cloud Data Services, Hewlett Packard Enterprise Storage. Guys, thanks for coming on, good to see you. Thank you, always a Thank pleasure, you. man. So, Sheila, start with you. Explain the difference to data infrastructure business and then Omer's cloud data services. You first. Okay, so data infrastructure business, so I'm responsible um, for the primary and secondary storage. Um, you know, basically what you physically store the data um, in a box, I actually own that. So I'm going to have Omer explain his business because he can explain it better than me. <laughs> Go ahead. Uh, so, uh, 100% right. So first, data infrastructure, platforms, primary, secondary storage, and then what I do from a cloud perspective is wrap up those things into offerings, block storage offering, data protection offerings, and then put them on top of the GreenLake platform, which is the platform that Antonio and Fidelma talked about on main keynote stage uh, yesterday. Uh, that includes multi-tenancy, customer subscription management, sign-on management, and then on top of that, we build services. Services are cloud-like services, storage, storage services are block service, uh, data protection service, disaster recovery services. Those services are then launched on top of the platform. Some services, like data protection services, are software only. Uh, some services are software plus hardware and the hardware in the platform comes along from the primary storage business, and we run the control plane for that block service on the GreenLake platform, and that's the cloud service. So I just want to clarify, so what we maybe used to know is you know, 3PAR and Nimble and StoreOnce, those are the products that you're responsible for? That is, is the it? primary storage yeah. um, part, right? And just to kind of show that he and I, we do indeed work together, <laughs> right? So if you think about the 3PAR, the primary, uh, sorry, the Primera, the Electras, the Nimble, right? All that, right? That is the building, that's the technology that you know my team builds, and what Omar does with his magic is that he turns it into HPE GreenLake for storage, right? right? And to deliver as, as a service, right? And basically to create a self-service agility for the customer and also to create a cloud, a very cloud operational experience for them. So, so if, I'm a, if I'm a customer, just so I get this right, if I'm a customer and I want hybrid, that's what you're delivering as a yeah. cloud service, and I don't care where the data is on premises, on in storage, or on a cloud. 100%. Right? So the way that would work is, as a customer, you would come along with the partner, because we're 100% partner-led. Uh, you'll come to the GreenLake console. On the GreenLake console, you will pick one of our services. Could be a data protection service, could be the block storage service. All services are hybrid in nature. We, uh, public cloud, is 100% participant in the ecosystem. You'll pro, pro choose a service. Once you choose a service, you'll like the rate card for that service. Mm -hmm. That rate card is just like a hyperscaler rate card. Uh, IOPS, commitment, min commits, whatever. Once you, pro pro once you procure that at the price that you like with a partner, uh, you buy the subscription. Then you go to console.greenlake.com, activate your subscription. Once the subscription is activated, if it's a service like block storage, which we talked about yesterday, service will be activated and our supply chain will send you our platform gear. And that will get activated in your site. Two things, network cable, power cable, dial into the cloud, service gets activated and you have a cloud control plane. The key difference to remember is that it is cloud consumption model and cloud operation model built in together. It is not your traditional as a service, which is just like hardware leasing. Yeah. Yeah. That's just, yeah, yeah, yeah. that's thing of the past. But this is, answers a question that I had, is how do you transfer, transform from a company that is you know, selling boxes, of course most of your engineers are software engineers, I get that, to one that's selling services, and, the, and it sounds like the answer is you've organized, I know it's inside you know, baseball here, but you've organized so that you still have you can build best of breed products and then you can package them into services. 100%, 100%. It's a, so, a separate but, but yeah. co complementary so, so the, organization. The simplest way to look at it would be, we have a platform side of the house that builds the persistence layers, the innovation, the file systems, uh, yep. the speeds and feeds, and then building on top of that really, really resilient storage services. And then how the customer consumes those storage services, we've got tremendous feedback from our customers is that the cloud operational model has won. 
is just a very, very simple way to operate it, right? Mm -hmm. So from a customer's perspective, yeah. we have completely abstracted away our hardware, which is in the back. It could be at their own data center, mm -hmm. it could be at an MSP, or they could be using a public cloud region. But from an operational perspective, the customer yeah. gets a single pane of glass through our service console, whether they're operating stuff on-prem or they're operating stuff in the public Got cloud. It. So they get storage, no matter what. They want it in the cloud, they get it that way, and if they want it as a service, it just gets shipped, 100%. plug it in, and auto-configure. It's that, ready to go. That's and the key thing is simplicity. We want to take the headache away from our customers. We want our customers to focus on their business outcomes and their projects and we're simplifying it through analytics and through this unified cloud platform, right, on like how their data is managed, how they're stored, how they're secured. That's all taken care of in this operational model. Okay, so them. I have a question. So just now, the edge, like take me through the scenario. I'm a customer, okay, I got the data center on-premise action, cloud, love that, great sir, that's a value proposition. Come to HPE because we provide this easily. Mm -hmm. okay. But now at the edge, I want to deploy it out to some Edge node, could be a tower with telecom, 5G, mm -hmm. or whatever, I want boxes out there, I want storage. What happens there, just ship it out there and connects up? Does it work the same way? 100%, so from, from our infrastructure team, you'll consume one or two platforms. You'll consume either the hyperconverged form factor, SimpliVity, or you might convert the converged form factor, which is ProLine servers powered by Electra's, Electra 6Ks. Mm -hmm. Either of the, but, but, but it's very different the way you would procure it. What you would procure from us is an edge service. That edge service will come configured with certain amount of compute, certain amount of storage, and a certain amount of data protection. Once you buy that on a dollars per gig per month basis, whichever way, whichever rate card you prefer, storage rate card or a VMware rate card, that's all you buy. From that point on, the platform team automatically configures the backend hardware from that, from that attribute-based ordering, and that is shipped out to your edge. Dial in the network cable, dial in the power cable, uh, GreenLake Cloud discovers it, and then you so start Self-service, configure it, it just shows up, right. plug it in, done. Self-service, but partner-led. Yeah, because we have preferred pricing for our partners. Our partners would come in, they will configure the subscriptions, and then we activate those customers and then send out the hardware. So it's like a you know, hyperscaler on-prem at scale kind of a model. Yeah, I like it a lot. So uh, you guys are in the data business. You run, you run the data portion of, of, of Hewlett Packard Enterprise. You know, used to, we, I used to call it storage, even though we still call it storage, but it's really, it's evolving into data. So what's your vision for the data business and your customers' uh, uh, data vision, if you will? How are you supporting that? Well, I want to kick it off and, have, and then you know, I want to have my friend Omar chime in, but Great. the key thing is that, that with the first step is, is that we have to create a unified platform, and in this case we're creating a unified cloud platform, right, where the, there's, a single plane of, there's a single pane of glass to manage all that data, right? And also leveraging lots of analytics and telemetry data that actually comes from our InfoSight, yep. right? We use all that, we make it easy for the customer, and all they have to say, and they're basically giving the answers to the test hey, you know, you may want to increase your capacity, you may want to tweak your performance here, and all the customers are like, yes, no, yes, no. Accept, yeah. Basically <laughs> it, right? Accept, not accept, right? That's actually the easiest way. And again, as I said earlier, this frees up the bandwidth for the IT teams to then actually focus more on the business side of the house, rather than figuring out how to actually man manage every single step of the way of the data. So the it's exactly what Sheila described, right? The way, we, the way this strategy manifests itself across an operational roadmap for us is the ability to change from a storage vendor to a data services vendor, right? Correct. And, and then once we start monetizing these data services to our customers through the GreenLake platform, which gives us cloud consumption model and a cloud operational model, and then certain data services come with the platform layer, certain data services are software only. But all the services, all the data services that we provide are hybrid in nature. Where we say you can be, when you provision storage, you could provision it on-prem, or you can provision it in a hyperscaler environment. The challenge that most of our customers have come back and told us is like, data center control planes are getting fragmented. On, on premises, I mean, there's no secrecy about it, right? VMware is the predominant hypervisor, and as a result of that, vCenter is the predominant configuration layer. Then there is the public cloud side. 
which is through either Azure, GCP, or AWS being one of the largest ones out there. But when the customer is dealing with data assets, the persistence layer could be anywhere. It could be an AWS region, it could be your own data center, or it could be your MSP. But what this does is, it creates an immense amount of fragmentation in the context in which the customers understand the data. Essentially, John, the customers are just trying to answer three questions. What is it that I store? How much of it do I store? Should I even be storing it in the first place? And surprisingly, those three questions just haven't been answered and we've gotten more and more and more fragmented. So what we are trying to produce for our customers is a context-aware data view, mm -hmm. which allows the customer to understand structured and unstructured data, and the lineage of it, how is it stored within the organization. Mm -hmm. And essentially, the vision is around simplification and context-aware data management. One of the key things that makes that possible is again, you know, the age-old InfoSight capability that we have continued to hone and develop over time, which is now up to the stage of like, one, 12, like 12 trillion data points that are coming into the system okay. that are now corroborated to give that back. And of course, cost optimizing it as well. Uh, um, we, we're up against the clock, but take us through the announcements. What's new from when we sort of last talked, I guess it was in September, right? Mm -hmm. right? What's, what's new that's being announced here and or you know, GA. Right, so three major announcements that came out, uh, because, you know, to, to, to keep on establishing the context when we were with you last time. So last time we announced GreenLake Backup and Recovery Service. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, that has, uh, that was VMware Backup and Recovery as a complete cloud uh, sort of SaaS control plane. No backup target management, no media server management, no catalog management, it's completely a SaaS service. Provide your vCenter address, boom, off you go. We do the backups, agentless, 100% dedupe enabled. We have extended that into the public cloud domain. So now we can back up AWS, EC2, and EBS instances within the same constructs. So a single catalog, single backup policy, single protection framework that protects you both in the cloud and on-prem, no fragmentation, no multiple solutions to deploy. The, and the second one is the, we've extended our hyperconverged service to now be what, I, what we call the hybrid cloud on demand. So basically, you go to GreenLake console control plane, and from there, you basically just start configuring virtual machines. Uh, it supports VMware and AWS at the same time. So you can provision a virtual machine on-prem, or you can provision a virtual machine in the public cloud. Got it. And uh, it's the same framework, the same catalog, the same inventory management system across the board. And then, the lastly, we extended our block storage service to also become hybrid in nature. Got it. So you can manage on-prem and AWS EBS assets and, as well. And, and Sheila, do you still make product announcements or is that, does Antonio not allow that? <laughs> well, yeah. we make product announcements. So you're, you're going to see our product announcements <laughs> actually done through um, the HPE Green Lake for block storage. Ah, okay. So our announcements will be coming through that because we do want to make it as a service. Again, we want to take all of that headache of what configuration should I buy? How do I actually deploy it? How do I, we, we, we really want to take that headache away. So you're going to see more feature announcements that's going to come through this. So feature topic. acceleration through, uh, through Green Lake will yeah. be exposed. Absolutely. There's just some cool stuff going on behind the scenes. Uh, there's you know, there's hardware a lot of good still stuff. matters, you know? <laughs> hardware still matters. Does matter. it still matter? Does hardware matter? Hardware still matters, but what matters more is the experience. And that's actually what we want to bring to the customer. <laughs> good. good answer. 100%. <laughs> All right. All right. Guys, thanks so hardware much matters. for coming yes. to theCUBE. Great you got to see it. you again. And thanks. hope the experience was good for you, Sheila. No, no, no. Thank <laughs> right. you. Yeah, well, Pleasure as always. All right, keep it right there. Dave Vellante and John Furrier will be back from HPE Discover 2022. You're watching theCUBE.